K-pop. The words alone are enough to make a person filled with ecstasy or cringe through every fiber of their body. Love it? Hate it? K-pop is becoming one of the most popular genres in the world, becoming a nearly $6 billion industry, and there's no signs of it slowing anytime soon. BTS, Blackpink, EXO, Girls' Generation, TWICE. These are some of the biggest names running the industry, but who's really on the top? Now, I've been wanting to do a tier list video for a while now, and I struggled coming up with a topic that I could do that fits the channel, I guess. And I finally settled on a topic that I feel pretty confident that I can speak about. The 2019 most popular girl groups in Korea. And I've seen lots of videos, and a lot of them are just people giving their opinions on what they think is best and who they like the most. And unfortunately, for me, nothing is based on my opinion. I tried to make this as fair and unbiased as possible. So we're gonna break this down, scientifically. Believe me, if this was based on my preferences, this list would be a lot different. The placements in the tier list are based on different data and statistics. The groups were graded based on four different criteria, brand rankings, social media presence, streaming, and sales. I took 52 current girl groups and manually compiled all these stats into a Google Sheet that is linked below in the description if you want to check it out. You can see how each group did in every category. Now, when I say I manually compiled the stats, I mean I literally went to every single music video and typed down the view count, their Facebook likes, Instagram followers, Believe me, it took a really long time, but I did it so I could give you the most accurate list and rankings for K-pop girl groups. Remember, this is the Asian theory, not the Asian opinion. Now, like the standard tier list, it goes from S, A, B, C, D, E. S obviously being the highest, and E being the lowest, also known as tier Nuku. Now, for the sake of time, I won't go over all 52. This would be like a two-hour video or something, but let's start out with one of the biggest names in K-pop. Now, if this was 2012, they would be S-tier. No question. They have lost a couple members, they used to have nine, and they aren't promoting as much as they used to. But even though they aren't in their prime, they are still very much legends. They're probably the reason why 90% of the guys that listen to K-pop started listening in the first place. <laughs> Known as the nation's girl group, I'm gonna have to give Girls' Generation an A tier. Moving on from the national girl group of Korea, now we have the national girl group of the Philippines. The most internet viral K-pop group out there, their hit Boom Boom already has 360 million views. Momoland, B tier. So we have Lovelies, Oh My Girl, and Laboom. All of them haven't done that well, but they haven't done terrible either, so C tier. Dreamcatcher, ugh, love them, C tier. April, also love them, also C tier. AOA and EXID, if this was 2015, they would both be at least B tier. But even though they're one of the older groups, they're still going very strong with streams, physical sales, and digital sales. C tier. It's different, itsy! As a big three group and a sister group to Twice, it's expected that they do well built as sort of JYP's answer to Blackpink. So far, they've been phenomenal, having one of the biggest girl group debuts in history. B tier. Now these next two groups, I wish, 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 wish were higher, but I gotta follow the rules, man. First of all, hands down, this is the most unique group in K-pop, bar none. Now, it's a group that comes from uh, some unknown company. When you watch a new music video or you listen to a new song, it's like watching a progressive story, much like episodes in a TV series or a new movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In this, they have built their own fictional sci-fi universe, a connected lore, and probably have the most passionate fans you've ever seen on the internet. Forget believers, forget directioners, forget army. Take the passion of those three groups and multiply it by a hundred. And then you have the fan base of our next group. Finally introducing Luna. Luna. They have hundreds of millions of total views and are insanely popular here in the United States and have memes upon memes upon memes upon memes. I have never seen a meme economy as healthy as Luna's. I like you. 
They are such a unique and amazing group. So, what tier should I give Luna? C tier. So it's strange. Despite their massive popularity here in the West and their integral connection with pop culture, they're still relatively unknown and not popular in Korea. Sadly for me and for everyone else, giving them a C tier. Born from Mnet's reality competition, Idol School, in the beginning, Fromis 9 was always seen as the Walmart version of IOI, even seen as a flop. But recently, they have been exploding in popularity, promoting all over the world, even gaining a sizable audience here in the States. And thanks to their popular single, Love Bomb, Fromis 9 is no longer a Nugu group. C tier. IOI, one of the biggest groups of all time, holding their own to even Twice and Blackpink. Unfortunately, the groups that branch from IOI haven't really been doing that well, so I'm gonna put all of the post IOI groups in D tier. Wikimiki, DIA, Gugudan, all D tier. That is, all except for one other group. They won Rookie of the Year and they have 50 million views and 72,000 sales. We are pretty. And we belong in the dead tier. R.I.P. Moment of silence, please. At first it was, we are Pristin. And then it was, where is Pristin? And now it's, we were Pristin. Oh, and Cosmic Girls are doing okay. See you here. After School, like Pristin, is another masterpiece from Pledis Entertainment. Despite not having done anything since 2014, they still technically haven't been disbanded, so I can't put them in the dead tier. So instead, they go in the... Huh? Tier. Winner of Mnet's reality competition, Produce48, and being the successor to IOI, you are given an extremely crazy head start compared to the other groups. Eyes One is the biggest rookie group around, and they are doing extremely well in Korea and Japan. From rap god Heiwan <laughs> to Miyawaki God Kuda. <laughs> and let's not forget Dance Machine. Eyes One. A tier. Everglow and Cherry Bullet, two rookie groups of members from Produce 48. Everglow's debut song, Bon Bon Chocolate, has 32 million views on YouTube, which is insanely good for a rookie group. C tier. Cherry Bullet did very well with their first single, Q&A, but haven't really done well with anything else. D tier. Dream Note and GWSN, both rookie groups. For Dream Note, their first single went largely unnoticed, but many fans like Kakuna Matata. D tier. GWSN did a little bit better than Dream Note, doing pretty alright on social media and YouTube. Their single Pinky Star got an incredible 20 million views. C tier. G Idol, an amazing group. Their first two singles, La Ta Ta and Han, did incredible. Uh, Senorita Do wasn't that great. But overall, the group is doing very well. Their popularity was also pushed to new heights because of their collaboration with League of Legends, introducing many new fans to K-pop and an extension to G-Idol. Also, they have Jan Soyeon on their squad, easily the best female rapper in K-pop right now. Her rhymes and flow are literal fire. G Idol gets B tier. CLC, G Idol's older sister, and despite being more senior, they've already been overtaken by G Idol in terms of popularity, streams, and sales. They struggled for a bit but found recent success in their single No for CLC. D tier. Mamamoo. Since their debut, they've always stayed strong and have always been on the top, ranking 6th in sales among the groups listed. A talented group with a really unique sound. And also, who doesn't love Mugyo? Mamamoo is... B tier. Another solid group, often overlooked as they debuted near the same time as Twice, Blackpink, and IY. That's some tough competition. But they've always held their own. 
an extremely talented group. G friend gets a B tier. A pink and Tiara. If this was 2015, both groups would probably be in the A tier. Now it's rare that we see a group that will go as strong and as long as Tiara has. B tier. A pink is a very special group for me. They were actually the group that got me into K-pop, specifically this song. <laughs> Now, despite debuting 8 years ago, A-Pink is still going strong and still killing it. B tier. So before I reveal the top 3, I'm gonna go ahead and sort out the rest of these groups first. And the verdict for everyone here? Well, there isn't really much of a reason to give or much of an evaluation. They are either all really new or just no one knows who they are. So all of them get a big fat... Nugu? Except very good, uh, you guys are D tier. Now, this is a good reminder that this list isn't grading talent, skill, or quality. Purely popularity and success. Take for example, uh, Elris, aka Sohee and Company. I, I love Elris, but that doesn't change the fact that they only sold 6,000 on their last album. If you're someone who's even slightly familiar with K-pop, it should be obvious who the next three groups are. So, the first group of the top three... Are you ready for this? It's your girls, Red Velvet! Sister group of the queens of K-pop, girls generation, Red Velvet has been tearing up the K-pop scene since their debut in 2015. They're known for having two different themes in their music, a red and a velvet side. Red represents their bright summer poppy sound. Then Velvet is their girl crush dark side. Giving them a unique versatility many other groups simply just can't pull off. People are drawn to Red Velvet, and also every single person in the group is hilarious. <laughs> Last year they sold about 300,000 albums, and their music videos have hundreds of millions of views. They have 2.8 million monthly listeners on Spotify, and if this was any other time in K-pop history, Red Velvet would definitely be the most popular group. However, they happen to be around the same time as the two biggest girl groups in K-pop history. So for now, Red Velvet gets a... A tier. best-selling K-pop girl group of all time. With almost 6 million lifetime sales beating Girls' Generation just this year. And what's scarier is that they're only 3 years old, debuting in October of 2015 from the hit reality competition 16, TWICE has been a MONSTER since day one. Often referred to as the girl group of Asia. The multinational group features 5 Koreans, 3 Japanese, and 1 Taiwanese member. 9 members total each with a unique and diverse personality, giving a variety of fans someone to love. In 2017, they won 36 Music Show Awards, which is an award given on a weekly basis to basically the most popular K-pop group at the time, and 36 would give them the most of any group in K-pop history. They also have 90 total music show awards, which is the second most by any girl group. In Korea, they have these awards called Desangs, which is the equivalent of winning Album of the Year, Artist of the Year, or Song of the Year in the Grammys or the Billboard Music Awards. TWICE has won this award 11 times, which is the most of any girl group. With that, they have won Song of the Year in 2016, 2017, and 2018, basically every year they've been around. And they are by far the best selling girl group of all time. And it's not even close. They are twice.
And while TWICE has pretty much dominated Asia in every aspect, there's another group that is simply unmatched and unrivaled in the US and internationally. Blackpink, Jisoo, Jennie, Rose, and Lisa. Currently on their highly successful world tour, Blackpink is dominating the headlines wherever they go. And according to my stats and data, Blackpink was ranked first in every single category except sales, which twice won. In April, it was Coachella. It was headlined by people like Childish Gambino, Ariana Grande, and Selena Gomez. But despite all the big names, the only name people seemed to care about was Blackpink, garnering 78% of the buzz. And they absolutely kill it on YouTube, racking up billions of billions of views with a B. Their last single, Kill This Love, at the time became the most viewed music video in the first 24 hours, getting 56.7 million views, beating names like Ariana Grande and BTS. Let's kill this love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their music video, Doo 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 Doo, is the most viewed K pop group music video of all time with 800. 60 million views. They're a worldwide sensation. Forbes ranked Blackpink as number one on Korea's top celebrities in 2019. They are Blackpink. So Twice and Blackpink, where do they rank on the tier list? Isn't it obvious? S2. No, wait. You know what? Twice and Blackpink are so far ahead of the competition. No disrespect, but no other group even comes close to touching them. Double S2. So that's my tier list. With TWICE and BLACKPINK leading the way, the world of K-pop is moving to new heights, which made me wonder, in five years, who do you think will be the next big thing? Well, you can't go wrong betting on JYP, so definitely ITZY. And I honestly do believe in Luna, and that they can be the best. And G-Idol is already on the way. Just make another banger like La Tata. Just uh, don't make another Senorita. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with my rankings, or did I completely mess up this one? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope you guys like my video, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and as always, Stan Luna.